Hi everybody. Happy Saturday. I'm gonna let you guys start coming on. Today is Ask Me Anything. So God only knows what's gonna happen in this show. Hi, hello, hello. I'm gonna let people start coming on. Hi everybody, hi, hi, hi. Thank you guys so much for joining. Whoo, what the hell happened to my Instagram? Does anybody know? I think it was that microneedling video. I don't know, but I'm grateful and I'm so glad that you guys are here. Whoo, for those of you who have never been to, I'm getting the questions. What supplements do you take? For those of you who have never been on this live before, I'm first gonna announce the winner of last week because I had the two different eye patches that I was gonna give away. Every, yeah, plastic surgery, we are going to get into all of it and I'm gonna be scrolling a lot. So it's not gonna be my typical live. Normally when I do a live, I've got like a, a, an eye, you know, something that I'm like gonna focus on, whether it's my protocol, whether it's a high protein diet, um, whether it's microneedling, I'll focus on one thing. This is like a crapshoot. You guys can ask me everything. Hi from Iraq. Um, you can ask me anything, but before we get started in that, and I have to start scrolling, um, I want to announce the winner of last week. And they won the two different types of eye patches, and that was um, Eye Barone, uh, Lene. Lene from iBarone, you won. So I will DM you, I'll get you your, I'll get your mailing address and I'll get that in the mail. Hi everybody. Okay, I normally have like my, my little setup at home. I'm coming to you from Cabo. Cowgirl 68, yay. Can you look at what, how many people are here today, Cowgirl 68. I love seeing the same people every week. It's just so nice. Okay, so the winner last week of the eye patches was um, I Barone, Lene, I'm going to reach out to you. Um, yes, I have tips of people in the early 20s. So that's out for you today. For you guys who wanna be in the drawing, every single Saturday there's a giveaway. So if you wanna be in the drawing, there's a little arrow down there in the corner, that send button. You click on that, it will not take you off of the site and you invite your three people. That automatically puts you in, in the drawing. When I post this to my site, you can tag three people there, which I really love. Um, and you can also just comment, 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 mm -hmm. because it increases your chances of winning the prize, right? And the prize this week is a full hour. Normally I'll give away devices, I'll give away skincare, but because we're talking about longevity and, and and healthy aging and the whole thing where you guys can ask me everything, um, I'm gonna give away an hour of my time. So I'll pick the winner next week. Hello, I'll pick the winner next week and we can Zoom through, um, we can do a Zoom session. I don't, I, don't, I don't sell products, I don't ship to Australia, somebody just asked that, but when you do book a one-on-one, -on -one, we can Zoom from anywhere. So if you think that you are, you know, you're, you're, gaining something from these lives education wise imagine what happens when i get you one-on-one -on -one and we have a full hour because i can do a lot with somebody in an hour okay so hello from india hello hello okay so i'm going to scroll back now and start answering questions also there's the little question button down there which i've never really used before but there's the question button down there. If you wanna press on that, you can, you can put in a question and then I can put it to the whole group or I can just keep scrolling. So the question I'm gonna answer first is do you have any tips for someone in their early 20s? Oh, yes I do. Um, because I've got three children, they're all in their 20s and I've got a stepson, he's in his 20s as well. And it's sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. That's the number one tip if you're talking about your skin because prevention is key. So you wanna have a factor 30 plus every day, all day from the moment you wake up. And if you're going outside at all, you wanna reapply every two hours. So I'm here in Cabo now, we're here for a wedding. Um, and so I set my timer on my phone for two hours when I'm out by the pool. I have a hat, I have multiple hats that I use. So it's all about, for, for the 20 year olds, it's all about protecting your skin, right? protect it first. So I have a factor 45 on my face, 
I'm always wearing a hat if I'm outside. I'm reapplying every two hours. That's the, the number one thing. And then somebody who's in their 20s, early 20s, that's where I would start. Um, do not get caught up on all of the marketing of skincare right now. You can either sign up for the newsletter, which is in my linked tree, and you will get my ultimate skincare guide along with the protocol on what to use. In your 20s, you can already start using retinoids. You can already start using vitamin, vitamin C serums. You need to be using sunscreens, okay? I'm gonna scroll back. I hope that helped. Um, how do I lose arm fat? Okay, well, that's a, that's a very complicated question. Um, lifting weights, it's not about, you know, muscle will not replace fat, but why is the fat there in the, in the first place? I mean, look at the diet. You gotta look at your diet. Exercise does not necessarily make you lose fat, right? You wanna build up the muscle, the fat becomes less apparent, um, and then you wanna look at your diet. Are you somebody who's, who wakes up and you're eating breakfast? Are you constantly have glucose in your system? Because it's only in times of deprivation, um, I don't even know how to say that handle, Vaja underscore Alim, it's only in times of deprivation that our body will reach into its fat cells for energy. So if you're waking up and you're having a bagel or you're having cereal or you're having a glass of orange juice, you're not doing anything for that fat on your arms, but having it accumulate. Because it's when you deprive yourself, if you're doing intermittent fasting, I've done intermittent fasting for 30 plus years. I'm 55 years old. For 30 plus years, I've been doing intermittent fasting. And it ranges for me anywhere between a 12 and a 16 hour fast. I aim for the 16 hour fast, which means I skip breakfast and then I have, um, I eat something around one o'clock. So that's one thing, lifting weights, tricep dips, make sure that you're getting your exercise in, but you really need, when you're looking at fat, you really need to look at your diet. Um, so I hope that that helps. There are surgical stuff that you can do as well. They can do a cannula through your elbow and suck the fat out from underneath if you've got an accumulation of fat in one area. I'm not somebody who's a propo proponent of plastic surgery. I'm not gonna push that. But if you've got something that's bothering you, that's gonna change you getting out into the world, it's gonna change what you wear because you feel uncomfortable, because you're feeling you're not, you have a little bit of low self-esteem about that. Somebody who's asking, how do you lose arm fat? I would think that that is already in your brain that we're, it's gonna change what you do, how you wear your clothes, what clothes are you purchasing? And for that, if it's something that's that, you know, tied to your self-esteem, there's, there's tricks to do all of that stuff. There's no over-the-counter stuff that's going to do arm fat. Although you could do a little radio frequency on a high setting of radio frequency twice a week on the back of your arms and radio frequency can disrupt fat. It's not gonna, I don't think it's gonna get you the result that you want, but it can disrupt fat, which is why when you're doing it on your face, you, do, you can do too much. You do not want to overdo radio frequency or you could lose some fat pads. So when you're using these at home devices, um, today is Saturday, so if you've been following my protocol at all, you know Saturday is my radio frequency days. So I did a, I just posted a little thing in the story telling you guys, oh, I'm doing my radio frequency on my face, and that's part of the skincare protocol. So when you sign up for that newsletter, um, it will get you the ultimate skincare guide, it will get you the protocol, and weekly, every Tuesday, I send um, a newsletter. So it's not all over the place, it's not every day, but every Tuesday you get a newsletter and everything that I've talked about in that live on Saturday goes into the newsletter. It might, I think I'm a couple weeks behind. So like today's newsletter, the Q&A, you'll get those, um, you'll, you'll be able to see what the questions were, how I answered them in, in a couple of weeks when you sign up for that newsletter. Okay. So let me see, scroll down. I hope that that helped with the fat on the arms. Starts with diet, 
exercise, could do some radio frequency, you could even do um, some, some lipo underneath the arm. And the, the interesting thing about that, when you do lipo underneath the arm, I've never had it done, but I do have clients that I've sent to do that. When you do lipo underneath the arm, they go right through the elbow, you never have a scar with that. And they can, if you've got a deposit here, they can suck that out. Again, I, you'd have to do a one-on-one -on -one consult with me and we'll see. Okay, so somebody just did this. Um, low carb or keto or fat loss a good okay so how do i now interesting i don't know how to i don't know how to put that uh, with everybody but it's the first time somebody's asked a question uh so jennifer asked low carb or keto diet for fat loss and good skin okay so when it comes to diet who i got a lot of shit somebody asked have you had a facelift i'm going to get to that i i kid you not in fact i filmed it and it's on youtube it has like a million uh, thing. So I, I don't, this is not the place you guys where I'm going to hide anything. In fact, I film everything that I do because I want you guys to be informed. I want you guys to get good results, right? I want you guys to, my goal as a health coach is to expand your health span, right? As well as the number of years on the planet but also help you look your best while you're doing it. Help you look your best while you're doing it. Because if you don't feel good about your own self, about you personally, not compared to your neighbor, not compared to the Kardashians, not compared to any stars, not compared to me, but for you, if your skin is looking great, if you are feeling great when you get dressed every morning, then that, that changes what you do for that day. And that affects longevity. That affects how long and how healthy you're gonna be on this planet. Okay, so getting back to the diet thing. I got a lot of shit from the low protein diet fad, but that's what we're in, you guys. We're in it and it's, it's hard to see when you are in something. In terms of longevity, what they are finding and I'm not getting my information from other health coaches or even doctors because doctors are treating symptoms of disease. They're not out there doing experiments and working with, with the genes and trying to figure out what turns on certain genes, mTOR, the sirtuins, what turns those on when we eat to be able to extend our lifespan in a healthy way. You want to have health, health, health all the way up to the end and then you pass. Not you're going to extend your lifespan because medi the, the medical community and the doctors are like, oh, let's do this surgery. Let's do this surgery. Let's do, we're, we're just going to treat all the diseases. No, that is an old school way of doing it. Health coaches, me, I'll tell you, me personally, I'm a gerontologist, I'm a healthy aging um, specialist. I have a master's in psychology, I have a master's in gerontology. I'm a certified holistic nutrition and health coach and I'm a 500 hour yoga instructor. There's a lot going on and I'm skincare obsessed. And skin is your largest organ. So there's a lot that goes on with that. You wanna get your information from the scientists who are at the front lines figuring this stuff out and it changes all the time. So if you're getting, if you are seeing a health coach who is, God, now I'm really going to get shit for this. <laughs> I'm going to say it anyways. If you're seeing a health coach that when you say, hey, I heard from this woman who's a gerontologist that a high protein diet could actually be detrimental to my health. If you're hearing that and a, a health coach goes, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, no. False, false that you're doing a disservice to your clients i'm sorry because if you think that this diet this way of eating right now that we are in that we are going to for the rest of human existence stay in the way that we're eating right now you need to look in your rear view mirror to see how much things have changed from the past to know that this is not stable ground that we are on right now this high protein diet is not stable ground. It's not, 
It's going to change. And I'm telling you right now, it is changing. It just hasn't reached down to the consumer yet because of big marketing. And we are bombarded with protein on every single item in the food store, as well as keto, as well as, you know, keto. So here's my thing. Keto is great. Keto is a great way of eating if you're doing predominantly plant-based, if you're microdosing your meat, if you're fasting at times, because it's during times of deprivation, remember, that our bodies will utilize our fat. You don't need to drink a keto coffee. You don't need to eat fat to metabolize fat. We have fat. It's stored. Everything that we have in excess, you eat excess protein, guess what it's stored at? It's not stored as muscle. Excess protein is stored as fat. So if you're trying to get in your protein all day long to meet some standard that is not going to help you live longer and healthier, it's actually going to be detrimental. Um, we got a problem. We have to change the way that we're thinking. And so for me as a health coach, I'm following people like Dr. David Sinclair, who's at Harvard. I'm following people like Dr. Walter Longo, who lo runs the Longevity Center at USC, where I just graduated from. That's the people where I'm following, where they're looking at the genes and figuring it out. And that's what they're teaching currently in our universities right now. That's where you want the information because it, ch if we are making leaps and bounds in terms of staying on the planet longer. Okay, so I hope that that helped. Keto is great. Just don't go buy a package that somebody is making money off of that says keto friendly. Think about that. That is like crazy. That's crazy. That's somebody capitalizing on your health or the decrease in your health. It's somebody capitalizing on that. Look at all of the no fat diets that we had. Okay, so I'm going to move off of this. Um, if, 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 if anybody wants to uh, do a one on one counseling uh, con consulting thing with me, please do because I can. It start good skin starts with what you put in your body. A good skin starts with what you put in your body. Okay, how do you layer? Let me get back to the facelift. Yes, so I'm 55 years old. I will tell you everything that I've done. So here we go. You guys ready? Um, because it, it cracks me up when like I'll post something on TikTok or I'll post something about skincare and I'm doing my thing or I'm doing like radio frequency treatment and some 20 year old says facelift, Botox, filler. I mean, you're not listening to what I'm saying because it doesn't have anything to do with that. A facelift does not decrease your pores. A facelift does not make your skin shine from within, right? A facelift does not get rid of fine lines and wrinkles. It doesn't. I have not had my eyes done. I have not had an upper bluff. I have not had a lower bluff. These are my eyes. These are the shapes of my eyes. I have not had my eye pulled up. Nothing. I've had nothing from here. Nothing. I do not have filler in my face. I have a fat transfer in my face that was done when I did my neck. I did my neck when I was 49 and a half. I filmed the whole fucking thing. It's gruesome. But it's me on the table. Skin flapped over. Check it out. It's on YouTube. It's got like a million views. Okay, so here's what I've done. Breasts, obviously. I've had three, I grew three humans in this stomach and nursed them all for over a year each. Okay? So obviously, I don't think you can, I mean, there are, you know, those exceptions, those aliens who we love to look at who are thin and have natural boobs. That's not me. I mean, I'm thin, but I also have, didn't really have a lot of breast tissue. So after I nursed three kids, my breasts weren't looking the way that I liked them, so I had implants done. So, that's that. That was the first surgery. Um, I had uh, my third child because I am tiny, you guys. I am tiny. I am a 24 inch waist. I'm tiny. I work hard at that in terms of like what I eat. Um, not necessarily genetic. I work hard at it. I lift weights. I eat a very plant based diet with healthy oils. I, I don't ever eat breakfast. I fast about for a five day fast on the prolonged fast about every, I want to say four months. 
So it's not, this doesn't come easy to anything, but let's just get back. So I'm on my third child, she ripped all the muscle inside because I have, a, I'm tiny, tiny. And there were three human beings, full term, natural birth. So I had my, it, it ripped my, um, my, my stomach muscles and I had to have a, an emergency surgery where there, there that left me without a belly button. So I had belly button reconstruction. That was probably, I was 35 at the time. So that was it for a long time. Breast, belly button reconstruction, workout, did all my stuff. I'm always in school. So went back to school, of course, got a, a master's in psychology and um, raised kids, did all that stuff. But I was always obsessed with skincare. So skincare has been a part of my life since I bought my first wrinkle cream at the age of 15. I've always been into that. How do you look and feel your best at every age and every stage? Okay, so we're moving on up, right? Belly button reconstruction after three children. Um, and that took me five different doctors to go to because nobody wanted to do it. And I found a doctor that wanted to get creative. So when you see a scar over my belly button, that's because somebody got created, got creative. That doctor has since passed away, Dr. Frank Ryan. Um, that doctor got creative in trying to help me be able to still wear a bikini. So nothing that did, I have never had a tummy tuck. I, I wish I would have had a, a, a tank top. On. If I had a tank top on, I'd show you guys my stomach right now. What, what I have is like a little bit of crepey skin here above the belly button because again, there was three human beings in the stomach. Never had anything done with my arms, nothing, no lipo other than to try to find little pieces of fat to be able to do fat transfer in the cheeks. I have no filler in my cheeks. I have a fat transfer in my cheeks when I did my neck. I was about to get married. I was 49 and a half, second marriage, Still married to him, the love of my life. Oh my God, I have a good husband. Um, I have a good husband. I have some, yeah, I get it. Okay, I'm not gonna get all mushy. Um, but I was gonna get married, and I, I was gonna get married at the age of 50. So about three months prior to my wedding, I thought, and if you look back in my old YouTube videos, you'll see nobody noticed that I had it done. And that's the way that you wanna do it. Nobody noticed. And also too, if you know that you wanna have something done, if you know no matter what, I'm gonna get this done. I've had four foot surgeries, cause my feet, that's a whole other thing. That's a, that's a genetic thing that happened where my feet were kind of, I was born with my feet backwards. I grew up with braces on my legs. My feet then really took a toll over the years because they weren't really lined up the way they were supposed to. Um, and I knew when I was in my 40s and 50s, I'm, I'm going to have to one day have foot surgery. Do it while your body can heal quicker. If I would have waited until I was 70 or 80, till I literally couldn't walk and needed to get surgery on my feet, that's not, that's going to change my health span. It's going to make me sit on my ass longer, right? It's not going to get me in the gym. So I took the time, I took about eight months and did one surgery after another on my feet to get it to where my feet are great now. And I'm not gonna have that surgery when I'm 70 or 80. I'll still be lifting weights. I ran the LA Marathon and then I had the foot surgery because I didn't want the LA Marathon to screw up my foot surgery. So I'm like, ah, my feet are kind of numb half the time anyways. I'm gonna run the LA Marathon, I'll do the foot surgery. So that's what I did. Okay, moving on up. Nothing, nothing here. I had, if you look at my old YouTube videos, I have genetically a big muscle right here. Maybe it's because I talk so much, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I have a big muscle right here that went like this. And I didn't want to look back on my wedding pictures and go like, man, I just don't like my profile right here. I knew I was gonna have a facelift. So me talking about having a face, that's like nothing. That's like saying, you know, I don't even know the analogy. That's like saying like, one day do you think that you're, you know, gonna travel the world? Yes, of course. One day I knew from a very young age, okay, 50 is the right time to do a facelift. 
Why? Because your body starts changing the way it heals after the age of 50. It just does. There's like some, and, a doc, and a, one of my doctor friends is the one that told me, there's like this invisible marker thing in terms of like how your body heals. And yeah, you can add in the collagen, which I add in. If you want, a collagen, if you want the best collagen in the world, DM me the word collagen, I'll get you that collagen link. There are things, I did hyperbaric chamber, red light therapy, collagen. Those are all things that help you heal. But if you know for a fact, I'm, I'm the type of person who is going to want to look and feel their best. And, and now I'm stressing the word look because um, that is related to feel and that is related to health span. If you don't think that the psychology of what you look like in the mirror, not compared to your neighbor, not compared to anybody famous, but what you look like in the mirror, if you do not like what you look like in the mirror, there are ways to change that. And I knew, listen, I'm, this is my nose. I have not had a nose job, not had anything done with my eyes. These are my lips and I don't have filler in my lips, but I did do this. So I had this little muscle here that they literally needed Dr. Mark Monty, amazing. Um, he literally had to shave this muscle down so that I had a better profile. It's genetic. It's in all, it's in everybody in my family has it, but I knew that I needed this, this done. So I went and saw like five different doctors. Nobody could do this without doing a lower face because there's no place to put the skin. Nobody could do this and give me a better profile without doing a lower face. So I've had a lower face. I haven't done anything else. Well, okay. Morpheus 8, Botox, hello. I do all of these radio frequency machines. You know, there's in office stuff that's great for looking and feeling your best, the looking your best, right? There's, they're great. Radio frequency will pass through the epidermis, go to the dermis, restructure that collagen. Has to be in that correct wavelength if you're gonna do an at home machine. So 40 degrees Celsius to 42 degrees Celsius. You know how much bullshit they're selling? on online with radio frequency machines that don't do anything or could potentially melt your fat pads. When you're looking for a radio frequency machine, you want to make sure that you're looking for it in that, in that therapeutic range, which is 40 degrees Celsius and no hotter than 42 degrees Celsius. And it's with that heat that your collagen can get restructured. That's why it's important to follow a protocol. You don't just do this every day. You don't do radio frequency at home every day. You're gonna cause more harm than good. You're gonna melt those fat pads and then guess what happens when you don't have a fat pad? You need that support. Um, I hope that that answered the question. That's literally everything that I've done with my face. So when people say too much filler, I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, when people say too much filler, I literally just wanna, I, I just, I can't. First of all, my mom has like these really cute little fat, cheeks here, which I love. My mom's tiny. My mom's five foot teeny tiny woman, but she's still, when she smiles, she's got these little cheeks here. So when they did the, the lower face, they took whatever they could, little tiny pieces everywhere, because I don't really have like a roll of fat anywhere because my diet is spectacular. Um, but they do help to support all of that. So they injected the fat in to help support all that. They chiseled out this little piece and did the lower. That's all I've done. That's been, that was right before I turned 50 and I got married three months later. And my profile in my wedding pictures looks fantastic. Was it worth it for me? 100% because I was going to do it anyways. I had one at 49 and a half. I don't know when I'll do my eyes because I don't think I'm a candidate for my, the eye yet. Yes, you can see a little crepiness here. Guess what I use? I use this device on my eyes that kind of does sonic vibration. It heats up. It helps that eye area to not be so crepey. I also microneedle over my eyelids as long as you're on that occipital bone, right? I microneedle it under here because that's tricking your body to behave like it was younger. It's creating those micro traumas. Okay, I'm gonna keep, how do you layer retinol and moisturizer? Retinol is always first. 
That's a great question. You want to layer your skincare like you dress for the snow. That's a good way to think about it because there's serums, there's thicker stuff. It's like putting on your long underwear and then your ski clothes and then a big parka. That's going to keep you super warm, right? But if you put on the parka and then try to put on the thinner layers, the long underwear and the t-shirts and the, it's, that doesn't do anything. So you want to layer your skincare according to the consistency of it, how thin it is. But when it comes to an active, an active is like something that's actually going to promote cell turnover and, and stimulate collagen. When it comes to an active that goes on first. So your retinol clean face, very dry, dry face. Don't put it on with water, dry face. Let your, let your skin kind of air dry a bit. Then you do your retinol. Then you do your moisturizer over the top. Hope that helped. Okay. Wow, nobody commented about the, the lower facelift. Like I'm a little bit shocked. Let me see if anything's coming in that I'm missing. Um, thank you guys all so much for being here. Remember that you wanna invite your three people here. So you wanna hit that little button, invite your three people. An hour of one-on-one -on -one consultation with me runs $249. This is not a small thing that I'm giving away. Um, and I don't give it away often. I don't give away an hour free often. I think I've done it only one other time on a live, right? Because there's a lot more that goes into that. It's not like the hour one, it's like an hour and done and I move on to the next one. No, I spend at least, I want to say a half hour in addition to that, giving you the summary of everything that we talked about, talk, giving you links to products that we talked about that I think would be able to help you if you're looking for um, in-office treatments, I'll oftentimes look for the, air, the, the places in your area. It's a lot more work than just an hour. So that's a big give. I hope you guys invite, you take advantage of it because if you think you're learning something here, oh my God, wait till I get into, you know, we're on a Zoom and I'm like, okay, tell me what you're eating. Tell me what you're, how are you moving? Um, what's going on here? Like there's just, it gets really, I, I get in there and I and I really um, give you that protocol, not like this, not like the big skincare protocol, but I give you a protocol of let's look at your your skincare. What are you doing? What's active in your skincare? I want to know everything you're using from the time you wake up until the time you go to bed. What are you using and in what order? And can I improve that? I had somebody that I was working with the other day that said. Um, that said, um, you know, I've been using, I, I use, I, my skincare is spot on, it's spot on, I use all this stuff. And I looked at their skincare, there was not one active ingredient in it. No retinoid, no vitamin C, no niacinamide. Somebody said, what actives do you put on the microneedling? You don't use an active with microneedling because you're already creating the trauma with the pen itself. I just use a hyaluronic acid. I like this by Costa Baja only because it's inexpensive. I'm not getting a penny. Just let me know. Um, I like this because it's a big bottle. It's inexpensive. You can use this as a conductive gel with microcurrent. You can use it as a conductive gel with radio frequency. Um, you can use it as a conductive gel or not a conductive gel, but a slip when you're doing the microneedling. So uh, when I'm doing it, when I'm doing microneedling, I'm not doing it with retinoids. I did one video with a retinoid and a combination of hyaluronic acid and a retinoid on my stomach because you guys, I've been doing this for a long time. So I know what I'm doing when I'm doing my own skin like that. And I knew that the recovery is going to be super long. And if you notice, I did it right before I went to Cabo. So I knew like I had, I had time to do it. I wasn't going to be exposing my abdomen. So I had time to heal. But post microneedling, you're back on the hyaluronic acid, a little spritz of mineral water, let it sit. Let all of that, the, you know, all of the stuff that has come out of your skin, the little droplets of blood, let them sit there. Spritz with a little mineral water. Don't put on an active until the next day. So if you look at my protocol, my, I microneedle every Sunday. I'm leaving home uh, to go home tomorrow uh, to be with my kids on Mother's Day. But I microneedle every Sunday, right? So. Uh, when, when you're microneedling, just know that at that night, you're not putting on your retinoids. You don't want to microneedle and create all these little traumas and then put, put on an active like a retinoid over the top of it. It's going to sting like crazy. 
and it could potentially get infected and it's not going to be the best way to heal. After you microneedle, you wanna do red light therapy, which is why the protocol shows you microneedle on Sunday, guess what Monday and Tuesday are, are focused on? Red light therapy. It's a red light therapy mask, red light therapy full body and your skincare changes accordingly. Remember, if you want this protocol, just sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter's in the link tree. Okay, I'm gonna keep scrolling here. Okay, let's see. Um, why do you use Dermapen on your whole body? Because our skin is not here. The skin is everywhere and it's our largest organ. It's the organ that, that is shown to the world, which is why when I look at somebody, when I work one-on-one -on -one with somebody, I can tell how healthy they are by, by looking at their skin. Your skin, when, if you were on a program, not only just your skincare protocol, I'm gonna do this for a lot of different things. I'm gonna do this on um, a longevity diet type of thing. I'm gonna do these protocols for like treatment of cellulite. I want you guys to have this information, right? Um, totally lost my train of thought. Oh, but when you're doing microneedling, you want to make sure that you're changing your skincare accordingly. Our skin is our largest organ. So I microneedle the back of my arms, um, because especially like right here, I microneedle my neck and chest. I microneedle my, my abdomen, the top of my knees, anywhere you have crepey skin, microneedle. It's tricking your body into producing collagen. Right, and it's collagen that we lose. It's starting at around the, the age of 25, we lose one to 3% of our collagen every, every year. And then when you hit menopause, I'm 55, boom, collagen drops. So the way, it's just like anything, you wanna trick your body into thinking it needs to come to the aid, right? It's coming to the rescue. Same thing when you're doing intermittent fasting. When you're fasting, when you're depriving, when you're low protein, it's signaling your body, come to the rescue. Let me restructure the damaged proteins that are already in my body. Let me, let me get rid of those bad cells. Let me get rid of those bad protein structures. That's the cleanup period, but it's in times of deprivation, right? It's in times of deprivation that that happens. Okay, I'm gonna keep scrolling. Do you ship to Australia if you're the winner? You know, I will. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, these lives and giving away these free products, because I get sent products all the time, and I am trying to get away from the affiliate marketing and trying to get more into the education role, because I feel like that's where I can have a better impact, is by teaching. I love what I do. Um, but it is costing me a lot of money when we have a winner for me to ship it because that's out of my pocket So I'm losing money at these lives, but hey, I hope you guys are I hope you guys are like looking and feeling your best right, you know at every age and it's changing the way that you feel about yourself You're being more proactive in your health um, Okay, so make sure I'm giving away the one hour one-on-one -on -one through zoom so make sure you invite your three people because uh, you'll go in the drawing and next Saturday I will, um, I'll announce the winner. And that, that, that value is 249, but normally I give, we give away skincare, I give away a bunch of different stuff. Okay, I'm gonna keep scrolling. Let me see if there's anything else. Oh, thank you so much, you guys. It's so weird when somebody calls me beautiful. I don't even know how to respond. Thank you so much. I love your content, so inspiring. You guys, thank you so much. I'm, I'm just, I love that you guys are here. What do you think about the macrobiotic diet and or blue zone diet? You guys, if that's a great question. That's a great question. I never count my macros. I eat food, I eat real food. If you can't pick it or pluck it, or if you are a meat eater, catch it, that's not real food. Real food is single ingredient foods. Doesn't come in a box in a bag, unless it's like rice or quinoa right? It's single ingredient foods. It's an apple. It's all the colors of the rainbow. So I don't count my micros because my macros, because I already know that I'm getting them. I use olive oil in everything. If I cook on high heat, I use avocado oil. 
But if you look at the blue zones, there's no blue zone where it's high protein. All the blue zones are moderate to low protein. It's plant-based. They're plant-based, little pieces, little meats here and there, but predominantly plant-based. That's every blue zone. Okinawa, all of them. Mediterranean diet, that's not high protein. Nuts and seeds and olives and yeah, and small amounts of meats and fish, small amounts. That promotes longevity. So somebody said walking three to five miles a day. Walking three to five miles a day is great. Uh, just walking three to five miles a day, I lost four pounds in two weeks. Also, I've been working out since I was 15. Great, great. Get up off your seat, right? Get out in the world and walk. But also, if you're over the age of 30, you start losing muscle mass. And when you start losing muscle mass, sarcopenia happens, which is when the fat infiltrates the muscle. It's really hard to lose weight after that. It changes your metabolism. So in addition to walking the three to five miles per day, start doing some, some weight lifting. Start doing some weight lifting, especially after the age of 30. After the age of 30, you gotta start adding the weights. Do the walking, do all of that, but add weight training, resistance training, push-ups, sit-ups, all of that stuff. You don't necessarily have to have a big gym, but just know this body, this body is not trained to be a bikini body. This body is trained to live to be 120. That's my goal when I work out. It's not how great do you look in a bikini? No. How can I stay on this planet walking and talking and, and working out and doing all of the stuff that I love to do right up until the end? How do you train that body? It's not just by walking. Walking is great. You gotta lift weights. You gotta keep your joints mobile, right? You know how many people have frozen shoulders? You know how many people I work with that have surgeries in their shoulders because this joint, the joints that go, you know, that can go in every direction, backwards, forth, around in a circle, all of that, these have a lot of, of this gets a lot of damage. So to be able to, you wanna train your body for longevity. Um, okay, uh, my mother always had, my sister to naturally do muscle, I always had the, oh my gosh, I can't keep up. I've always had them since I was 10 years old. I still have them and I lift weights three days a week. That's what I do. If you guys wanna know what my, my um, workout regimen is, I lift weights at least three days a week, three days a week. Um, and that's like an hour in the gym lifting weights. You don't have to do an hour in the gym lifting weights. You can do, there's a lot of like 10 minute weight lifting things. On my YouTube channel, I have 10 minute exercise videos. You don't need to work out for an hour but you gotta do something that's weight bearing. You're, that's better for your bones, it's better for your metabolism, it's better for a lot of different things. So that's a longevity, that's the way that you work out in, in, to, be, you know, to be able to be active for a very long time. I also add in yoga. So yoga helps me with my stress. Stress is a silent killer, you guys. You wanna live a long time, you gotta learn to control your stress. My favorite way is grounding. I go outside barefoot, sit in the grass at least a half hour because there's this change, exchange of electrons between our earth and our bodies. So you go out barefoot, you know, we walk around with rubber soled shoes. It's, it's, oh my gosh, the way that our, we've changed the way we're living um, is sad to me because, you know, we're not living in the same earth that our grandparents were, were living in. And I'm not gonna get into like all of that kind of stuff but we're, we're using rubber soled shoes. And so all of this, um, all of these free radicals are building up in our bodies. And it's when you step on the earth barefoot that you have that exchange of electrons and the free radicals um, disappear. So it's where our bodies are positively charged. Um, the earth is negatively charged. And so there's scientific research for this. I did a, I did a research paper on this at USC six months ago. Six months ago, microneedling info. Um, I'm gonna do a whole protocol on microneedling, but microneedling, basically I do every Sunday. 
So I do it once a, once a week, no matter what. So tomorrow, because I just, I'm leaving Cabo tomorrow to go home with my kids, with my kids on uh, Mother's Day, I was here for a wedding. I will be microneedling my knees. Because my knees aren't going, I've already been in bathing suit here, my knees aren't gonna be, I, I know that I can wait a, a week or whatever. I'm gonna microneedle the hell out of my, my knees tomorrow night. Once a week, pick a different body part. On the protocol, it has it all. I have face, abdomen, um, neck and chest, and knees. And these just alternate. Every once in a while, I'll throw in my hands. And you want to make sure that when you're microneedling, you're, if you're using a roller, you've got to really make sure that you have that clean. So you want to spritz it with alcohol. I'm traveling, so I don't have all of my stuff that I normally have around. Normally, I have like little things I can show you, but you want to spritz that roller with alcohol. If you're using the Dr. Pen, which is on my Amazon storefront, that has the cartridge that changes every time. So you're starting off with a fresh thing of needles. In terms of the depth, the thinner your skin, forehead, around the eyes, neck, those that's thin skin, you want to go really, really low. So 0.25. A 0.25 is fine for that area. Stay on your occipital bone. Don't go over your eyeball. Be smart about it, right? And then you're just using hyaluronic acid afterwards. When you're doing a body part, you've got more meat here. Guess what? You can go to like a one, 1 1.5 on the back of your arms. Stomach, I do 1.5. I don't use numbing cream for me personally, although I do have it on, the, on my Amazon storefront. I don't use numbing cream because I have found that when I, because I've been doing this for so long, but when I use numbing cream, I tear my skin up. I will go multiple times over and over and deeper and deeper. And then it's like, oh, I just added to my recovery time. So I will make a protocol for microneedling. The next time when I do a live, if I do a live on microneedling, I'll make sure I have a protocol. There's a lot, because this was such a big hit, I'm gonna be doing this on a lot. I'm gonna do a hair loss protocol. I'm gonna do a whole live on hair loss. Hair loss is not something, I mean, I've got all this little baby hair now. I've, I'm talking to a dermatologist. If you have hair loss, the person you wanna talk to is your dermatologist, not your hairdresser. Your hairdresser doesn't know what is exactly causing the hair loss. It's your dermatologist. They study that stuff. They study that stuff. So I have been working with a dermatologist. Um, I am on a new hair growth regimen. The collagen really helps, but there's also other stuff, um, prescription stuff, the oral medication. Uh, they just came out with minoxidil in an oral form. Um, somebody says, how much grams of protein should we eat, da eat daily? Well, I can tell you what you shouldn't do. And then I'm going to tell you what Harvard Health says. I'm going to tell you what the longevity experts say. Health coaches and bodybuilders and whoever, you know, the weird thing about food is everybody has to eat. And so everybody thinks that they're an expert. Get your information from people who are on the front lines of really finding out how do we live our longest life in our healthiest way. So Harvard Medical Health will say 0.35 grams, 0.35 grams of protein per pound of your body weight, 0.35. What a lot of health coaches will tell you is 100 grams or sorry, one gram of protein per body weight. I'm 110 pounds. That'd be 110 grams of protein for me. That does not promote longevity. What that does is in that mTOR pathway, it should, which I'm not gonna get into, but that's where you, you gotta talk to the longevity scientists. What that does is it signals to your body, I already have protein. I don't need, you know, I don't need to, to uh, utilize the damaged parts that I have. So it stops autophagy. You want those receptors in your body to go, oh my gosh, I'm a low protein. Let me utilize all of these damaged proteins accumulating in my brain, Alzheimer's, and restructure them, restructure them. High protein diet doesn't cause Alzheimer's and dementia and Parkinson, doesn't help. It absolutely does not help. So Harvard Medical says 0.35 grams of protein per pound. That's the recommended daily allowance. Our current American diet is way past that. 
way past. You take the 0.35 M's and you add a little bit if you're a weightlifter. 0.35, add a little bit. But these protein powders, protein bars, all of this shit, people are making money off of it at the detriment of your health. 0.35 grams of protein per pound is recommended. Longevity experts are 0.31 to 0.35. Add a little bit more if you're a bodybuilder or an endurance athlete, add a little bit more if you're over the age of 65. I get between 30 grams and 40 grams of protein a day. I don't even count. You know why? Because all you have to do is eat real food for me to get 30 to 40 grams of protein a day. Later on when I'm down by the pool, I'm going to take a picture of my salad. I'm going to give you all the grams of protein in that one salad has edamame in it, has garbanzo beans in it. I ordered it yesterday. Um, so yeah, I keep getting the question about protein. So point, so the, the, the amount that you, that uh, Harvard Medical says is 0.35 grams of protein per pound, per your body weight. So you just go 0.35 times, in my case, 110. That's how many grams of protein I would need in a day. Longevity experts, who are really on a cellular level trying to get their bodies to, you know, redo all of the restructure, all of the damaged protein is a 0.31 to a 0.35 grams of protein. That's what the longevity scientists are saying. But Harvard Medical is 0.35 grams of protein per pound. That doesn't mean you can't be paleo. That doesn't mean you can't be keto. That doesn't mean you can't be vegan. That doesn't mean you can't be gluten-free. You can be all of those things. Just don't reach for the protein bars and the protein powders and the, all of that shit that's marketed to us. Single ingredients, apple, banana, chicken breast, uh, that's what you want to be reaching for if you're somebody that eats meat. I, might, I personally microdose my meat. I get all of my protein from plant, and then I'll throw in microdosing of my meat. That's what feels best for my body, and that's what's best for longevity. If you look at all of the blue zones, look at the blue zones. Not one blue zone is a high protein. Not one fucking blue zone. That's where we need to be looking not on the supermarket shelves where big businesses are making a ton of money from us and, and hurting our health. And we go to these supermarkets, some of the worst places to shop. Oh my God, I'm going to get sued. <laughs> some of the worst places to shop are health food stores because we wrongfully assume when we step in those glass doors, everything in there is healthy. And we're getting those buzzwords, keto, gluten-free, paleo, keto-friendly, all of this stuff on the packages. We don't need it. And not only do we not need it, it's hurting us. You have excess protein in your body. You're not going to turn on those genes that restructure the damaged proteins that are already existing. Do you know that an avocado has all of your essential amino acids that you need, all of those proteins that you need. Do you know why? Because our body makes the rest. Our bodies are just incredible, incredible the way that they, that they act, the way that they take care of us. It's incredible. But we need to learn where are you finding your information? So if I say, a low pro scientists are showing that a low protein diet is leading to longevity. And some health coach says, no, false, absolutely false. I'm sorry. When was the last time? This is going to sound really bad. I have to like, let me rethink how I say that. <laughs> rethink this a little bit. Where are you getting your information? When was the last time you were in school? What scientists are you talking to? You know, 
who are you following on social media? The, the people that are saying you need two grams of protein per body weight. I would need 220 grams of protein if I followed some of these crazy high protein suggestions. Even at one gram of protein per body weight, that's 110 grams of protein. I couldn't get that unless I ate a lot of meat and I was eating packaged food that was protein enriched. Our bodies aren't made for that, you guys. Our bodies are not made to have excess protein added to a powder that we then mix with milk or almond milk. or That's not how our bodies are made. We're made to go in long periods of time for deprivation. We're hunter-gatherers. We, we nuts, seeds, fruits, veggies, all the things you can pick and pluck from the earth. And occasionally they killed an animal. But it's during those times when protein is low that your body reaches in and really gets it working optimally by restructuring the damaged proteins. The accumulation of damaged proteins sit there accumulating if you are completely continually bombarding it with food and with high protein. Okay, went off on a little rant there. I think I, I, think I kept it kind. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. It seems expensive to look and feel good. Are, are there ways to do it more affordably? Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, in fact, my favorite skin, this, this will just tell you, my favorite skincare on the planet is Zio Skin Health. Super expensive. But I've learned a lot about skin from Dr. Obaji and the health of skin and how to trick your skin into behaving like it was younger. It's not just by slathering it with moisture um, because it, what it does is create lazy skin cells you want to all of the all of the um, anti-aging big breakthroughs like retinoids were developed by from you know trying to treat acne dry things out and why because when you dry out the, the top you know use that active to chemically peel or dry the top then the moisture comes from it's like oh my gosh i have to produce moisture right so those lower skin cells start producing moisture you pile on so much moisture on the top lazy skin cells. I learned that from Dr. Obaji. Um, but here's what I was going to say about affordability. My favorite skincare on the planet is Zio Skin Health because that's Dr. Obaji's new line. And so it's constantly, he's, he's just a genius. But those products and the science behind those products keep evolving. He sold the other line and that kind of stopped where it was. But the Zio Skin Health keeps going. It's super expensive. So if you d join the email list, I give you my ultimate skincare guide. There's not one Zio Skin Health product on there. When I work with people one-on-one -on -one and I know that they can afford it and they say, what's the, really the top of the line? I'll send them there. But there's so many affordable products right now. The Ordinary is a great company because affordable products, effective. And you know what? They're not making eyeshadow. They're not making lipstick. They're not making stuff like that. Their research is going into skincare. Don't ever buy skincare from someplace that also sells a handbag. They're not hiring scientists to do that skincare. They're doing white label and you're paying a lot because it says Chanel, it says whatever. On, when, you, when you get the ultimate skincare, this is the protocol in terms of how do you fit in the devices and how your skincare changes. So I'm not giving, I'm giving you the devices that I'm using in terms of the concept, radio frequency, microcurrent, microneedling, all of that stuff. But I'm not um, giving, when I says retinoid, it's not saying retinoid and giving you a certain thing. When you get the ultimate skincare guide though, again, you have to sign up for the email list. Um, and the reason is because it's, it's all, that part becomes automated. I can't tell you how many times I had to do this. Um, while I've been here, send this to people who gave me the word protocol because it wasn't automated. It's been like the majority of my vacation, but, I'm, but I hope you guys received it. Um, but on that ultimate skincare guide, I have The Ordinary, I have Paula's Choice, I've got Drunk Elephant. There's, there's, there's effective and affordable kin, skincare that's out there. You just need to look for the ingredients. You're looking for certain ingredients. So at night, it's always a retinoid. Yeah, and there can be, it, there's lots of different retinoids on the, 
on the market. You can always do a 0.05 prescription, which is ideal. Um, but there's also a lot of over the counter. Ordinary makes a great one, a 1%. Paula's Choice makes a great one. It's also a 1% retinol. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Differin Gel, I have my Differin Gel here. Differin Gel is a third generation tretinoin, uh, sorry, retinoid that's adapalene. Um, really great for acne, but also great for sensitive skin. That's the one that I use most often is Differin Gel. Okay, um, someone says, do you trust in yoga facials? I'm not big into the whole yoga facial thing. I don't know why, probably because I'm getting muscle stimulation from this. Uh, this is radio frequency and it also has EMS mode, which is an electro muscle stimulation. If I were to put this on, which I'm not gonna turn on right now, but you put it on with a little bit of conductive gel, this whole thing goes like this. So I, I feel like I'm getting a lot of muscle stimulation with that. Um, so that's my thought on that. But I do know that there's somebody that had reached out to me that wanted to do like a session of the yoga facial and see if I felt like it was um, beneficial. I do know that it probably helps a lot with lymphatic drainage right so anytime you use a beauty roller you want to make sure you're rolling back towards the channels that drain you've got the channels behind your ears that drain whenever you've got puffy eyes you want to use a beauty roller or jade roller or whatever and push it out towards here and down towards your ears where it drains so i don't, i don't know enough about um facial yoga to be able to say it's good or it's bad um, and that's the other thing that you're going to get from me. I'm not going to bullshit you, you guys. If I don't know something, I'm going to tell you I don't know. And then I'm going to find out. <laughs> because I'm curious too. I want to know too. Um, somebody says, do you use actives in microneedling? No. I would not suggest using actives in microneedling. You just want to use a hyaluronic acid. Little spritz. Keep, it, keep the device moving. I, I do not, the, the, the thing with the microneedling is not so much that you're pushing the product deeper. That's not the, 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 the thing that's beneficial. The thing that's beneficial is the actual microtraumas itself. The microtraumas itself. It's like when you, fit, when you fall down at, when you're a child and you skin your knee, your body is signaling, come make collagen, come make collagen. It makes, it forms that scab. Well, after the age of 25, when our collagen drops, we're tricking our body into producing collagen by creating those microtraumas through microneedling. It's not about how deep can I get a retinoid. It's about how, how often and how consistently can I create microtraumas micro in such a way that my body is behaving, my skin is behaving like it did when I was 25. What eyelashes brands do you use? These are my eyelashes. I've tried to use false eyelashes. I'm not a makeup person. I uh, consistently every day, what I have on right now is I've got a little filler in my, I have a little pencil that I fill in my brow right here. Um, I have a tinted sunscreen, Ilia. I love the Ilia tinted sunscreen because it's a serum. It has niacinamide in it, hyaluronic acid. So it has hyaluronic acid in it. It has niacinamide, so it's brightening the skin, helping with any discoloration. But it also, um, it also helps to cover, and it's a factor 40. So the Ilia Super Serum, that's also on my, not on this protocol, but it's on my ultimate skincare routine. So you need to make sure that you um, download that. Um, but that is... That's what I, what I do for my skin. Uh, so my eyelashes, these are mine. I just use mascara. I think it's Thrive Mascara. Um, that's it. And so that's my makeup, basically. So I'll put a little bit of pink on my cheeks and I'll do a, uh, right now I have on just the Ilia Factor 40 skincare serum, um, a little eye, uh, little mascara and some lip, which I just found this lip, which I really like. This Lip Glow Color Revive, anyway. Um, okay, so I'm just going. Everybody keeps saying eyelashes. Your eyelashes look really nice. Oh my God, I wonder if it's that mascara. Hmm, I, maybe I'll tag the mascara. I'll tag this. What do you think about Morpheus 8? Love, are you kidding me? Let me tell you a little bit about Morpheus 8 and the competitors, which are also, um, what was the name of that competitor? Secret 
RF, Secrets RF and Morpheus 8. Very, very similar. Somebody just did their neck. Oh, you missed the whole lower face thing. Listen, I spent a lot of time going over every single surgery. So when I post this, replay, replay. Um, I'm so glad you just did your neck. Okay, um, gorgeous inside and out. You know what? Best compliment ever. Yeah, I try to be honest. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Okay, I lost my train of thought here. Um, where were we going with that? Maybe I'll just um, scroll and see. Giveaway, great giveaway. Yes, the giveaway. You guys, you have to invite your three people. Oh, it's already after 12. Dang it. Um, you have to invite your three people, but um, the giveaway is a one hour Zoom with me, which is worth $249. So invite your three people. When I post this, make sure you tag your three people. What's your views on peels um, and what age to start? Start at the age in mid twenties. That's when I would start peels. Do a peel once a, once a week. Um, on my protocol, I do my peel on, my gosh, where is it? On Thursday night, I do a chemical peel. Thursday night. I don't use a retinoid on Thursday night because I just peeled my skin. And guess what happens the next day? I have microcurrent and then I'm back on this stuff. So um, peels are important. Um, I did a whole live on AHA, BHA, which peel is right for you. Make sure you check that out. So when you, when I post the live today, you'll see that it has like a certain, uh, style of the, of the image. All, if you go back through, those are all the lives. I recently just started putting the word live there, but those are all the live shows. Go back to the one on chemical peels because chemical peels are skin changing. For sure, you add that in. You don't do retinoids every single day. Your, your, your skin will get adjusted to it. And then what? It's good to cycle your skin. It's good to like throw in, throw in a, a, a chemical peel every once in a while. Okay, I'm gonna scroll. Um, peptide serums are fine. What can people use for dark circles under their eyes and what's the cause? There's a genetic component for dark circles under the eyes. There's a lot of different, I did a whole uh, live on eyes as well in terms of how do you treat eye bags and um, dark circles. There's a genetic component for dark circles. There's also a shadowing involved. So if you have an eye bag, your dark circle could be caused from a shadow there. Um, but if it, if it really is a, like a genetic thing or a darkening of, of the eye area, you can only be, be on hydroquinone for no, no more than four months. Do not ever buy hydroquinone in a country where they just have it in the pharmacy and go rogue and use it yourself, you will destroy your skin. Once you get that blackening of the skin, there is no cure for it. So if you have, if you're wanting to lighten your skin, you need to be with a dermatologist. No more than four months on hydroquinone, but also you can do things like, um, you can use niacinamide, you can do, um, you can do uh, vitamin C serums. They're not gonna lighten them probably to the extent that you want them if they really are true um, genetic darkening of the, of the under eye. But there are things out there. Go back and look at that live. The live was called Younger Looking Eyes. Okay, I'm just gonna scroll. I really need to get down with all my friends here. Um, do you take any fillers? Have you taken any plasters? I've already answered that question, so make sure that you watch this back. Okay, I'm 57, I have great skin, no fillers. Also, my mom had great skin. My husband always says that I have great skin. Fantastic. You know, that's what I say about our skin. Our skin is, people ask, why is a gerontologist? I'm a gerontologist, I'm a healthy aging coach. I also have a, a master's in psychology. Why do I talk so much about skin? Because sometimes I'll pull you in with the skin and then I'll change your diet. Because that's where you really start shining. Collagen is important. So the collagen supplement, if you guys want that, DM me the word collagen. But what you put in your body, good skin starts with what you put in your body. If you think exercise doesn't affect your skin, alcohol doesn't affect your skin, all of this sleep affects your skin, that's the healthy aging component of it. So there's so many ways, stress reduction, what are you eating? How are you fasting? How are you exercising? How are you protecting your skin? How are you putting the topicals on? It's inside out and outside in. Those are always the best results and multiple treatments, multiple types of treatments. Mix it up. Hi, hi Pride. Okay, I think that that's it. I mean, 
Where can I find that chart? Okay, so let me just, let's recap a little bit. We already announced the winner of the eye mask from last week. To get this protocol, you DM me the word protocol, but it'd be better if you just went on the link tree, click on that, subscribe to the email, which is only, it's literally, instead of you guys having to take notes during a live, it all comes to you in an email with clickable links. I mean, you can't get much better than that. So go to the link tree and click on the ultimate skincare, subscribe to the email. You'll get the ultimate skincare guide that has affordable, um, you know, treatments. And I go through everybody, what type of skin do you have? All of that. It also gives you a peel. Somebody just said, what's your, the right age to start a peel? 25. I would, I would recommend 25. Yeah, 25, 23, somewhere around there. Um, and then it'll also give you this protocol. So if you are, have already subscribed to the email list, then just DM me the word protocol and I'll send you this, the protocol directly. Okay. And you guys, I know that this is going to sound really bad. So I'm going to try to like say this in a nice way. Um, I, uh, listen, I have, have been blown away by the number of new followers since I left LA and just, I'm here for just the weekend. I'm leaving tomorrow. And so I, I'm so grateful and I'm, and I'm just absolutely touched in, in ways that I can't even begin to tell you, you know, it means a lot because I, I feel like I, I want to help people. But, um, that said, you know, you have to be, whatever you decide to do, you need to be consistent with it. So that's why I came up with this protocol. So make sure that if you haven't subscribed to the email list, just DM me the word protocol and I'll get this to you. Um, and again, I'm getting away from the affiliate marketing stuff, but if I can save you a couple bucks on something, then I, then I do. But it, again, it doesn't stop me from testing out all of the other radio frequency device. Please be more elaborate on diet. Um, I am predominantly plant-based. This, this live's going to go over and you know what? If you guys have questions, you're still here. Maybe I'll just take a little extra time. Normally the lives go an hour. It's not easy talking for an hour. Water break. It's not easy talking for an hour, but back to my diet. I've been intermittent fasting for 30 years. I, have, I don't eat breakfast unless it's like a special occasion. You know, there's a brunch that somebody's celebrating something and I'll, I don't, I'm not that kind of person that's like, oh no, I can't. No, that's, I, I don't do that. Um, you have to live. Um, but for 30 plus years, I don't eat breakfast. I have a 16, my goal is a 16 hour fast. So if I don't eat it past like 8 p.m. and I don't ever restrict that either. So last night we had dinner with friends because we're here for a wedding. Um, I, I think I ate at 10. So I probably won't eat until two or three. I'll drink a lot of liquids. I drink a big thing of green tea this morning. I'll have another big thing of green tea. When I'm at home, I have a thermos of green tea about this big, one of those hydro flasks, every single morning. And then I break my fast with a mushroom coffee. Why? Because I've already turned on autophagy with my fast. My body is already going in and fixing all those damaged proteins, right? Because in times of deprivation, your body reaches in the fat cells for energy and restructures the proteins that are damaged. So I probably won't eat till about two o'clock today. Um, somebody just said, how can you find that chart, uh, in the link tree afterwards, click on the subscribe to my email. You'll get the ultimate skincare guide as well as the protocol. Then I eat a predominantly plant-based diet, predominantly plant-based and I microdose my meat. So if I, I'm cooking chicken or something for my husband that night, instead of a, a breast of chicken, which make sure that you're finding stuff that does, doesn't have all the chemicals, all of the additives, the, you know, it's pasture raised and it's, you know, doesn't have any of those kind of things that go in. And you know, our meat these days is not the same meat that our grandparents ate. So you have to be very careful in terms of what's in your meat, only buy organic. You know, you don't want something shot up with a bunch of hormones. If you think that that doesn't affect your horm hormones, it all does, it all does. So I eat predominantly plant-based. I don't restrict my eating at all. After I've done my 16 hour fast, I break it with a mushroom coffee because I've just done autophagy because I've fasted. So I, my 
my body is already restructuring those damaged proteins. And then I'll break that fast with a mushroom coffee that helps with brain health, right? So it's got lion's mane, it's got reishi, it's got a bunch of different of, of mushrooms in there, which is great for your brain health. And that's how I break my fast every day. And then I'll have my lunch and then I'll have my dinner. And again, it's predominantly, it's not like I never eat dessert, I do. I have like my vegan ice cream and all of that stuff. I, I have my, my cheat stuff. It's just not a bag of Doritos, you know? Weight-bearing exercise decrease your risk of osteoporosis, 100%. You know what else does? Hormone replacement therapy. If you have questions about hormone replacement therapy, I urge you to follow, um, what was her name? Dr. Taylor, Dr. Taylor, Menopause Taylor. Yeah, at Menopause Taylor. Um, there's, there's a lot into that. What, what beauty treatments do you get and how often? Um, that's on my protocol. I do a lot of stuff at home. I, have, I do a lot of stuff at home. Okay. How do you deal with depression? Please advise. See a psychiatrist, see a psychologist for sure. But also, um, you know, grounding and meditation are very helpful. Exercise is very helpful. When you ground to the earth, it increases um, your certain, not only does it increase, you know, your mood, uh, lifts your mood, but it decreases depression. It's not a cure-all but it's very good and it's very powerful and it's absolutely free. So grounding, I did a whole um, live on grounding at my mom's house. My mom lives on, a, I grew up on a farm. Uh, so my mom lives in the middle of like 20 acres of grapevines and I did a whole live there while I was grounding. Okay, you guys, I have to get off of here. Where do we mic, where, where do we get a microneedle? Um, on my linked tree, it's on my Amazon store. So I'd use the Dr. Pen M8, it's on my Amazon store. I don't think I can come to you guys live tomorrow because I'm going to be on a plane. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the chat in subscription. So if you're not part of the Live Young Club, Live Young Club is where you'll get exclusive content. Um, it's $4.99 a month. And when you have questions that I can't get to, because there's only one of me here, it's just me. <laughs> I don't have a big team. It's like, I'm it. Um, if there's questions that I can't get to, if you join the club for $4.99, ask me the question and cancel the next month because at least there, you know, you'll get a response. When you DM me a bunch of questions, there's hundreds of people that are DM me, D, direct messaging me and I, and I just, I won't be able to get to all of it. So if you have a pressing question, you want to utilize me for a month of free coaching in a public chat. Um, join that subscriptions. And then if, once you get your, your question answered, if you want to quit after that, or you feel like you're not gaining anything, then quit after that. But at least you'll get those questions. So instead of going live tomorrow, which I've now started doing this Saturday live is going to be um, posted to my main feed. So you guys can all rewatch it. That's where you tag your three friends to be in the giveaway. But my Sunday live is only going to be posted to the club members in subscriptions. And then so for tomorrow, instead of me going live, because I will be on a plane, I'm gonna open up that chat and I'll have Wi-Fi on the plane. I don't really wanna do a live on the plane. I don't even know if that would work. I don't think it would. Um, so, but I am gonna open up that chat. And so you can ask me anything for two and a half hours while I'm on a plane home, if you join the club, the, the subscription club, which is 499. So that's it, that's all I got. I hope you guys have learned a lot. If I, if I didn't get to a question, if you just came on, I'm gonna repost this so you can rewatch it. Um, and I will see you guys next Saturday, 11 a.m., the same time. And you'll get like the promo of what I'm gonna be talking about. I might be talking about hair loss, um, I might be talking about age-related testing. When do you get all of these kind of colonoscopies and cancer screenings and all of that kind of stuff? I'm not really sure. Or I might microneedle my whole face. We'll, we'll have to see. But I'll see you guys next Saturday at 11 a.m. Thank you guys so much.